Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nemo Pack. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Did you know I can drop items? After finishing editing the previous video, I was like, maybe I should check the controls. And yes, that was the problem because Q was apparently set to sprint. Anyways, that is not very important. The important thing is, we want to start today's episode by doing a little bit of Eidolon. If we want to make anything in this mod, we need something called Pewter Ingot, and we get it from Pewter Blend. And that is just a combination of iron and lead. So let me get a few. Actually, three is more than enough. We want to make a brazier and two stone hands. Also, another thing that we need is enchanted ash, which is basically bone in a blast furnace. Or actually, any furnace. One of the most important crafting ingredients in Eidolon is called a soul shard because it's used in literally every single recipe. And in order to get it, we need to perform a ritual called crystallization, which will harvest the souls of the undead. You guys might remember that last episode we found a spawner for husks and I kind of destroyed it. Which to be honest with you, now that I'm thinking about it, it was a very stupid idea. But do not have any fears, because I have already found a new one. It's actually down there. It's the same skeleton remains that we found and there is a dungeon underneath. We should torch it up, right? Just to make sure that nothing spawns when we don't want it to. Yes, there is one spawner here, good. Do we get any loot? It's not the worst. So here is what we need to do. I did bring some enchanted ash and undead creatures cannot cross it. So if they spawn over there, they cannot get to me. We have our brazier and the two offering hands and we should be able to do the ritual over here. And one of them spawned. We need more. Maybe I should cover that hole. Yes, this should be much better and they should spawn really fast. I'm hoping. It's two redstone and bone meal in the center. So redstone, redstone, bone meal, and we just light it up. There you go. We got 11. I'm actually going to do this for a while because we need quite a bit. So I just died again to one of those stupid plants. I think this area is considered to be a jungle biome and this is why they're growing over here. Anyways, now that we have access to soul shards, we can craft something called arcane gold inside the crucible. This is basically one of the items that we need in order to get into astral sorcery as well as botania. We can also have a few fun rituals with it. If you guys remember in all the mod 6, we use the magma block, but unfortunately I do not have access to it. So I'm using fire. And that should work. Well, there's only one way to find out. We add the water and see if it boils. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. So just to refresh your memory, the crucible recipes have different stages. The first stage is that we need to add redstone dust and soul shard. Then we wait for a chemical reaction and then we add two gold ingots. So soul shard, two redstone, and we wait. Now we can add the gold. There you go. We have it. There are a few recipes that you need to stir it as well, but uh, we're not that far off yet. Now that it is night time, maybe I should do a little bit of hunting. Cause eventually I also need to find a zombie heart and if we don't hunt for zombies, we're never going to find it. That is a normal zombie. That is a boss. So if you touch me, I'll be wounded. <laughs> okay. Warpal 2. Nice. Actually the zombie hearts, you will get it from the big guys. He saw me. They do crazy amount of damage. He did not drop it. I was not successful in getting a zombie heart, but it's perfectly fine. We can continue to progress. The next step in Eidolon is to sacrifice an animal. And this is why I made a goblet. Bringing the animals to our base is going to be time consuming. And if we want to perform a ritual for it, it's also relatively expensive. So I personally think that it's far easier to bring the ritual to the animals. Oh, and I need my goblet. You come with me. We just need to kill him with the sword. And we do have blood in our goblet. And the chant is going to be like this. Okay. Hear me, please. Thank you. We have unlocked a new one. So we can upgrade our altar and we can also make the touch of darkness. Let us take a very small break from Eidolon and focus on something much more important tools. So in this mod pack we have Tetra and I had no idea how it works. This is why you might notice that I'm struggling a lot with tools. I just watched a very nice tutorial on this mod from Rage which I'm going to link his video in the description because he does a hundred times better job of explaining everything than me. You know me. Me YOLOs. So the way that I understood this is that if we want to upgrade this iron sword into steel, we just put the steel in, that will increase the damage by one, that will also increase the durability. But in order to make it, we need a tier 3 hammer. So I just made an extra stone hammer so that we can upgrade the other stone hammer to iron hammer. Cause for some reason we need a hammer in order to upgrade the hammer. So this is half iron, we also upgrade the other half into iron, and that should be tier 3. So now if I want to upgrade my sword, this should not be an issue. Magic capacity minus 12. 
Okay, we did manage to get a Vorpal 2 book from a mob and I'm assuming we can increase the damage which is not that bad. So this will do a little bit more damage and we will also get heads. How dare you call my hilt flimsy? So having a bone hilt will increase the magical capacity. That's not bad. Also, I'm going with the material that I can afford. Yes, that will increase it by 18. Good. Another thing that I have learned is that apparently this is like tinkers, so the more that you use your tool, the more you can upgrade it. Yeah, there is something called hone and now it's 7%. Also, we are doing tons more damage. I should have done this on day 1 because so far the game has been very painful for me. Although you might have been telling me in the comment section of the first video, but the problem is I haven't uploaded it yet. Anyways, I just throw away our garbage tools, let me make some proper ones. I have been thinking, our lives would be so much easier if we have access to a little bit of enchantment. Uh, hello? That was a mosquito. Anyways, I was going to say that our lives will be so much easier if we have access to some enchantments. We cannot mine obsidian, but maybe we can barter for it. That is a bastion. With piglins. We have them exactly where we want. Pearls are nice. Yeah, gravel is not very useful. Did they somehow disable it? We have a crying obsidian. It's okay, do not be worried. We can craft more gold. Oh, I hate that face. Oh, they stick to your face. You know what? This is a bastion. There should be obsidian inside. <gasps> Holy! <laughs> Look at all the loot! We all... I was going to say we also have a shield, but uh, maybe we shouldn't use it. Well, there's nether, right? Yes, we got obsidian. Uh, I can't pick it up. I thought now that we have more gold, maybe we should do more trades. We got exactly what we needed, so let us just go home. I have been digging around our base because I was hearing spiders and yes, I did find a cave. But do you see that boss bar up there? It's under my home. So do we kill him because the boss bar is kind of annoying. I'm very sorry. Okay, we have to stab him in the back. I remember that in 1.12 he was kind of blind. He doesn't seem to be blind. Nope. Okay, now is our chance. Again, our chance. And I missed. One shot. Okay, we have to hit him one more time. Yes. Final hit. What will you give me? A helmet? And the axe? I can wear the helmet. The axe is fun, but it's not very useful. But on a very positive note, neither of them ever breaks. Oh, and by the way, when I was saying that this is right under our base, those are my chests. We did manage to find two artifacts and I did not have time to read them. This one is a magma walker. Condenses lava on their foot, converting it into solid magma. So it's basically like a frost walker in the nether. This one also ignites other mobs and gives me full fire resistance. I can't really complain, that was an amazing journey. Do you see my nemesis over there? He died. Uh, can I put it on the tool rack? Nice. So unfortunately I wanted to go with an enchantment table, try to make bookshelves, but I have lost all of my levels thanks to the guy. So I think instead we're going to go with Eidolon and make a soul enchanter because, well, I can afford the levels. And we do have a decent supply of soul shards. You know something funny? I just remembered that we never even crafted the crafting table from Eidolon. So there you go, here is some red carpet. And here is the magic workbench. And if I'm not wrong, this was the recipe. Perfect. Since this is made out of obsidian, I don't think if I place it down, I can pick it up. So maybe for the moment, we just put you over here. Oh, I can pick it up. So we just put you next to the bed. If I give you a book and some soul shards, what will I get? These are not very good. Well, we can reset it. Maybe I can put flames on the bow and then try again with the book. Sweeping edge is nice. I'm guessing protection for the chest plate, which I can upgrade it to protection too. But here is my problem, I really want fortune. Okay, at least we did manage to get it on an iron pick. Oh, this is also fortune. I can get it on a book. We just need one level and we do have a test subject. Because you know, anything with fortune is a huge bonus for us. I hunted some mobs, I smelted ores and we have decent enchantments. They're not the best but you might notice that we do have fortune 2 and unbreaking 1. And we also have sweeping edge and fire aspect. We just have to go to the nether in order to mine some quartz and gather some experience. So if we add fortune 2 and unbreaking 1 to our pick, it only needs 2 experience levels. That's nothing. And just out of curiosity, can I also repair it? Yes. I'm beginning to like this mod. 
Fortune at this stage of the game where I have to do manual mining is going to be incredibly important for us. So I'm even happy with Fortune 2. The enchantments were amazing. We went from having almost literally no diamonds to having 58. It's not incredibly useful because I just wanted 3 pieces but you know, can't complain. Anyways, I think we have enough resources in order to start a little bit of create. It's incredibly expensive for us because in order to make one andesite alloy, you need one steel ingot. It's not incredibly super expensive, but it's very slow. We should always start by having some rotational power, so I did make some water wheels, which I don't want them to face that way. I want them to face this way. And we shall have two. We cannot make the engineer's goggles yet because it requires a plate and that is what we are working towards, but I think if we put the water like this, that should give us the maximum rotational energy. Cause it's flowing from here, going down, and going that way. I could be incredibly wrong, but we will know after we get our goggles. For making plates, I think we need one depot, and there should be a press, yes. The question is how tall are you? Not that tall. So I can actually put the depot over there and let us see if we can get a plate. Very slowly. But it does work. So ladies and gentlemen, our engineer's goggles. I think the first thing that I want to check is that did I set up the water wheels correctly? Yes, 256. I think 256 is their maximum because we can't pump water up. We should also start making some iron plates. Because the first thing that I'm going to craft is a saw because I'm tired of chopping down trees. So you have your thingy in the back, okay. And I would like to mention nothing is going to look beautiful for a very long time. Because most of our setups are going to be temporary. So will it damage me? Yes, okay. Good to know. We cannot fully automate this right now, but at least it will save a little bit of time. I think here's how we're going to do this. We're going to have a giant spruce tree. And if I manage to put the saw over there, it should chop it down. No? Oh, you have to remove three of the blocks and then it will chop it down. Yes, it's not perfect, but it saves a lot of time. Believe me. Because look, I got 100 pieces of wood. We just remove these three logs. We put the saw back. And we get tons of wood. Because in this mod pack, we also have another problem. There is no fast leaf decay. So essentially, you have to wait like five minutes to get saplings. We did not get into create just to chop down trees and make a fancy goggle. We also want to get a better yield from mining. And this is why I made a millstone. If you provide a millstone with iron ore, that will give you crushed iron ore. And if you wash it, instead of nine nuggets, you will get 10. And also there is a 50% chance of getting like five more nuggets. So it's not technically ore dappling, but it will give me a better yield. But the millstone itself is incredibly slow, so we need to increase the rotational speed. Therefore, I have a big cog. We add a small one and that should be double the speed. So if I just put a vertical gearbox and you know, one more cog and put the millstone over here, you should rotate. Good. You scared me. If I give you wheat, you should process it and give me flour. And you give me two. Thank you. I'm sure it's going to be incredibly slow, but let us start with, I don't know, half a stack of iron. It's also very good that you don't have to lock the hopper. It's smart enough. Okay, we are getting the crushed iron, now we need to wash it. We need a fan, which does not really have a complicated recipe, it's just four iron plates. By the way, I have plenty of ender pearls, can we make a wireless terminal? Maybe it's not a bad idea. Yeah, the recipe is not terrible, glass and chest and wireless terminal. Yeah, how do you work? Do I have to configure it with the terminal? Oh, you cannot configure it with the terminal, you have to actually look at your terminal, otherwise it's not going to work. Because if I close the door, you cannot see the terminal and this is not working. It's okay, it was worth a shot. I'm not sure if it's going to put a lot of stress on the system or not, but maybe we can use the same setup that we have. So if I put the fan, will you work? It's facing the wrong way. Yes, it does work. It's just pulling me in. I think we just need a gearbox and you should push me. Perfect. So as you guys probably already know, three of them, there are a few ways of using these fans. If we put a water bucket in front of it, you see the particle effects? That should be able to wash ores and also give us dough. There you go. We can use the dough in order to make bread and we can also use it in order to get slime balls. Anyways, we have 32 crushed iron ore. Let us see how many nuggets we get. Oh, we got a lot. Holy. Okay, we had 46 nuggets in the system, so I converted them into ingots. And let us see how many iron ingots we get. 43. That's not bad. That's like 50% more. If we want to upgrade our current system into something which is much better and highly efficient, we need to upgrade it to the crushing wheels, but unfortunately we need brass. And for getting brass, I need a blaze. And I haven't found one. 
I did say that the millstone is incredibly smart because you don't have to lock the hopper in order to get the output, but there is one giant flaw with it. If you put one stack of items inside, some of them will despawn. It can handle 51 items maximum and then everything will despawn. So maybe we can make it go a bit faster. Currently the SU is 128 and we are generating a maximum of 256. So in theory we should be able to make it go twice as fast, yes. But that should be our limit because this is 256, this is 128 and this one is 64. Yes, it is 64 and we only have like 512 in total to spare. So if I give you a little bit of gold, you should be fast. Yeah, it's not the worst. At least I can put one stack of items inside and it will not despawn. Oh, it's already done. I also want to start Botania today because there are a few trinkets that would make our lives a little bit easier. And besides, generating mana early game is going to be time consuming. So the sooner we start it, the better. That is a bear. Can you like kill them? He's not happy. Okay, one of them is dead. Honestly speaking, I don't think they... Oh, an alligator. Hair of bear. Uh -huh. I was going to say why I don't see any botania flowers and then I found some. And I do understand that you don't need shears in order to harvest mystical flowers, the shears are for the sheep. I thought finding the flowers in the wild should not be that difficult, it seems new. <laughs> I did not find all the flowers that I wanted so we need to go with the fertilizer. I was running out of bone meal so you know what we should do. They do say exploration is fun but uh, sometimes you have to grow your own plants. And I think this time we have everything we need. I was missing the grey ones. We cannot have fires around the base because I have a bubble which will put them off. So we need to use a magma block. If you look at the recipe of a petal apothecary, we need something called a lesser soul gem. That is two redstone, two lapis. We get a chemical reaction, we add the soul shards. We steer twice. And add the quartz. And I messed it up. Maybe we have to drop faster. Yes. And we were missing some arcane gold. So I should be able to make the inlay and here is our petal apothecary. Actually I have not checked the quest book, did all of them count? Some of them did not count but I'm assuming whenever we break the blocks we should get them completed. Most of you guys already know this but you only need one flower of each type because you can plant a petal, bone mill it and then shear it. And you will get four. And this incredibly technical process is known as petal dabbling. I hate this log. We're going to use that one for living wood. And here is the living rock. I thought while I'm doing a little bit of botania, maybe I should explain to you how the progression system in this mod pack works. There are absolutely no cheaty ways of generating RF because even the thermoelectric generator from immersive engineering is disabled. So we have only two ways of generating RF. One of them is the man of flux field from Botania, which honestly speaking, I don't think it's going to be very viable. And then there is another item which is called the alternator and it will convert rotational energy into RF. It's from an add-on mod to create. Also, there is another item in this mod which is called the electric motor and that will convert RF into rotational energy. So it's basically the exact opposite. And the main reason that you would actually want to use that is because the external heater from immersive engineering is also disabled. So you cannot run a furnace engine from create indefinitely. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that we have to use the alternator in order to generate RF. Then maybe we can have a diesel generator and, you know, have more power. And that is going to be our plan until we get into mechanism. It's not enough mana? Oh, <laughs> I did not see that coming. Because I saw the recipe for a mana diamond and I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. But this I was not thinking about. I have just spent a crazy amount of time exploring in the nether and there is absolutely no fortress. And then I remembered in this mod pack we do have roguelike dungeons. So I just have to gear up and hunt a few blazes down there. The thing is we need better armor and I think we go with diamonds. What kind of a recipe is this? I do agree it's not the best but it's manageable. Or at least I think it is. Yes. Okay, I did manage to get some hemp. Our steel plates should also be ready, hopefully. And I'm hoping we should be able to make the chest plate. I also have a little bit in order to make leggings, but we will figure that out later on. On a very positive note, the top fabric is just hemp and sticks. No chaos shards. So here is a diamond chest plate. And I don't know, we just go with steel leggings. This is okay. A few enchantments is also not a bad idea. Protection 2. Actually, we got until protection 4. I wanted to repair my pick and apparently there's a repair cycle. So the previous two were steel and this one should be sticks. Interesting. I am fully geared up. We have food. We have crates. And most importantly, we have a lot of torches. So let us go and find the roguelike dungeon that we saw in the first episode. What was that? Oh, it's my bubbles. I have just marked it on the map and it's that way. Uh, <laughs> I almost fell in it. Do you know what I just remembered? If we are going to go and hunt blazes, 
we should at least take the blaze burner, cause this is an incredibly long journey and I don't want to do this every day. And while we are here, maybe we take two more crates and just a little bit more food. And also I'm going to make four blaze burners. I don't know how many we need, but four should be a good number. It exactly takes one Minecraft day to come here. Why am I not dead? I have a feeling I got stuck on a vine, but there are no vines. I don't know, maybe I have something which gives me feather falling. Are you a boss? Actually, the loot itself is not the worst. Okay, anyways, let me get to the lower level. I'll be right back. <sighs> so see you in like, I don't know, 20 minutes? And this time I'm carrying a bed. You know, just in case we die. Uh, actually, I found loot. Okay, we are back. I fell down again. <laughs> but don't you worry, here is my grave. I took a TNT to the face. Also, this time before opening a chest, we dig. Holy. Some of them have more health than me. The wither skeleton we shall keep, the skeleton I don't really need. That's actually a very good legging. As it turns out, in this version of Minecraft, roguelike dungeons no longer have blazes. Or even if they do, I haven't found it. But I did find loot. A crazy amount of loot. I think this is the jackpot room. I do understand that this is getting too long, so let me go and find the blaze. Then I'll be right back. Uh, why can I fly? Oh, it consumes fire and use it for levitation. What? So I think finding a nether fortress is not that difficult. I was around 5 seconds away from rage quitting, but we finally found it. I was thinking how do we go up there, uh, we have ender pearls. Yes, yes, terrible fortress. For me at this very moment, this is heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, a blaze spawner. They have a shield. I should have these things at the ready. You come with me. That guy in the center was doing a crazy amount of damage. I thought we should take him out with a bow. Yes, one rod. I really need more than one rod, but maybe we should try and find a better spawner. I thought I'm going to need so much blaze rods that it actually makes sense to cover this area because the other blaze spawner was spawning blazes and, well, they were shooting at me. Although I would like to mention this is not a perfect result because we only have 34. And those guys are the worst. They're called wildfire. And sometimes they will activate the shield and you can't really kill them. We get free skulls. Who shot me? Okay, we don't need anything else from the nether, we take the skulls and we go home. Oh, and by the way, the flight that I have is not permanent, so it's like temporary gliding and then it has to recharge by consuming fire. Anyhow, see you at home. I was very unlucky with the fortress, but we can have our mana diamond. Not the diamond, the pearl. And with that, we can make a runic altar. We're also not going to go that fancy because I'm not incredibly rich, but we are going to make a few trinkets. Oh, and by the way, I did manage to find four mana steel ingots, but if you want to actually craft them, that is a steel ingot. So it's not incredibly cheap. I have all the runes that I need, but can we also make a rune of fire? So as usual, we're going to have our rod of the land, rod of the seas, and I'm guessing since we don't have any type of flight, a rod of the skies is not the worst idea. And I would really love to be able to make a hand of the ender. I forgot that we also need a rune of summer. So something fun in this mod pack. This is how much mana you need in order to make one mana steel. But if you want to make a mana of pearl, this is how much you need. Anyhow, here is my fancy pendant. And here is the sojourner sash. So basically we have a water bucket, we have infinite dirt, we can fly, we can run faster and we don't burn. It's just that none of them are going to work as long as we don't get our band of mana and for that I need one mana pearl. We don't really have tons of mana and we are not going to have tons of mana anytime soon, but let us fill it in as much as we can. That should be at least enough in order to let me open the hand of the ender and also give me step assist, yes. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.